Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for another YouTube video. All in crypto here. And today we are going to be talking about Cardano and something that is set to happen at midnight. We are going to be looking at potentially the launch of one of Cardano's most anticipated sidechains, Midnight, set to launch at midnight. We're going to look at the announcement. And then we're going to be going into what Midnight actually is, because Midnight is a big deal. And we've often called Cardano, we've called Cardano a number of things, a tortoise uh, in the sort of uh, context of the hare and the tortoise story. Um, we've also called it a cake that has layers with Ouroboros at the heart of it, the beating heart, if you were to kind of use the uh, human anat anatomy as an analogy, um, that essentially pumps blood and is the life force to all these different organisms um, or all these different protocols, be that side chains, be that layer twos. You know, Ouroboros is one of the things that really attracted me to Cardano because it is, in my opinion, one of the best proof of stake consensus mechanisms out there. It just simply works and has been working now um, pretty much without a, a, a hitch for a while. So enough of me rambling on. We've got a very interesting borderline philosophical video coming out about Cardano and why we actually choose to continue to champion it. We own many cryptocurrencies. Cardano is one of them. It's not our largest position, but by no means is it our smallest. Let's dive into what this actual um, video is going to be about. And that is, of course, the potential announcement of Midnight. So this is a Twitter page, obviously titled Midnight. You can see that um, it was only recently um, sort of birthed. And there was a post put up 11 hour, hours ago. The future starts at midnight. Follow now and hit the bell on our profile to be the first to find out what's happening next. So are we looking at the launch of midnight? What is midnight? We're going to be explaining all this. If we go over to followers, you can see that actually midnight um, does have, you know, the likes of input output following it. A lot of people that we really respect. Shout out to Pete each and every time. Absolutely phenomenal guy who's making exceptional, if not the best Cardano content out there, um, if I do say so myself. You've got Marlow, another sort of protocol. So let's take a little bit of a step back and let's actually look at what Midnight is. Now, we are going to be publishing an article over at uh, allencrypto.com. We have seen such explosive growth for our website thus far within it only being publicly announced just over two weeks ago. We are going to be the one-stop shop for all your crypto needs. Uh, and we are publishing an article later on today before this video comes out. So I'll link it in the description on Midnight explaining it in a little bit more detail. So let's actually go ahead and start things off with what Midnight actually is. Um, and let's listen to the official sort of spokesperson, the head of Midnight actually introducing it. And we're going to start off introducing it by actually talking about the problem that Midnight is looking to address. So let's get into that. Um, I'm Rob Adams. I am the Chief Strategy Officer here at IOG, and I'm here today to tell you a little bit more about a project that Charles talked about in his keynote yesterday called Midnight. Um, I'm also lucky enough to have been the, or to still be, the general manager um, for this project for, and I have been for the last year or so. Honestly, this is one of the most exciting projects I've ever worked on. I may not look like it, but I'm extremely excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason is because I believe that this project has a unique ability to bridge the gap between Web 2 and Web 3, the traditional IT world and the new IT world. Um, so why do I say that? So Web 2 brought us a really interesting and new set of capabilities that we never had before. We were able to collaborate, interact, and transact with people and institutions that we were not able to, in ways we were not able to before. The downside of doing that, though, was we had to give up our personal information to be able to do that. In many ways, we had to basically turn over um, everything about us to some entity, some place, in order to be able to operate. The downside of that is, obviously, people were collecting our data and selling it to other people. People were losing our data through security breaches and other things. Um, people were scamming us for our personal data because it is so valuable. When we get to the Web3 world, we actually have um, 
two different kinds of solutions. We have one solution that's trustless, which basically doesn't really hide your transactions in any way, so your transactions are public. You're only masked by an address or something like that, but it's not too hard to be able to, in many cases, be able to track you back to who you actually are. Or we have complete anonymity solutions where everything is completely dark. And nobody can know anything about you, and I don't know anything about anybody else. So I'm not able to have confidence that I'm transacting business and or collaborating with people who I know or people who I trust. So that was an introduction into the problem that Midnight is trying to uh, address, and it is a real problem. Uh, and perhaps even more so a problem when you take finance, which is often closed in, in, in certain areas behind closed doors, and you take it onto a public ledger. There needs to be something like Midnight that acts as a kind of barrier, if you will, a shield for uh, the likes of data leaks. And, and, and um, in the kind of ethos that Cardano has been built for and to do, you know, it gives you your anonymity, your sovereignty over your own um, details and data back. Uh, and it, it, it's in the kind of ethos of what crypto is trying to do at large, which of course is, um, you know, don't trust, verify. So that's the problem. Uh, before I move on to the second clip, actually explaining what Midnight is and how it's trying to solve this problem, quick shout out to our state pool each and every time. We have now been validating the Cardano network for well over two years. If you guys do have some spare Cardano or you're already delegating with a pool, do consider switching over to All In. Uh, it's not a, it does support us in regards to, obviously, we uh, collect fees for running a state pool. We have a very low fee, lower than most others out there. Uh, and we are operating and providing rewards just like everybody else. So if you do have any Cardano, please do consider uh, staking it with All In. Um, we aren't going anywhere and plan to be here for the next 100 years, you know, and, and pass it into the hands of somebody else. Let's move on now to uh, an explanation from Rob about what Midnight actually is, um, because it is nothing short of a fascinating project. And it's another sort of piece of armor that Cardano has and that will be able to um, offer anybody who's looking to utilize uh, the Cardano blockchain. This is where Midnight comes in. So what's Midnight? Midnight allows developers to create dApps that allow users to protect their own information, to keep their information on their own systems, don't have to share it. All they do is share assertions about their personal data. Those assertions can be based on things like KYC information and others so that the person on the other side of the transaction can have confidence that those assertions are correct. It also leverages Cardano, as Dom said in the last talk, um, it's a side chain of Cardano. So it leverages things like the security and robustness of Cardano and the decentralization of Cardano, but it extends that trustless ecosystem by using zero knowledge uh, cryptography and comp confidential computation to be able to ensure that a uh, user's personal data is protected because they own it. So what does this mean for developers? And developers are our real primary concern for the first phase of Midnight. What it means is that developers can easily write dApps that don't require their users to share personal information. It doesn't mean that they might not for some regulatory purposes, but it means that it's possible. It allows people to maintain autonomy over their own data so they own it and have sovereignty over it. And it allows people to connect, collaborate, and transact in a way that is confidential. Now, of course, it's uh, sustainable because it's built for developers. There are a lot of interesting developer tools that come with it, and it depends on um, Cardano and gets a lot of goodness that you come to expect from Cardano. So as Charles mentioned yesterday in his keynote speech, there's a basic philosophy to Midnight. We believe that these three freedoms are really essential to having a vibrant blockchain-enabled world. One is freedom of association. So you can collaborate with people based on rules that, they, that are set by the community itself. So an example of this might be, say I want to create a DAO that is focused entirely on local politics in my city. 
I can create a smart contract that says only people who are of voting age in my jurisdiction can participate because I don't want outside interference and I don't want people who are unable to vote in my jurisdiction to be able to participate. I want people who are going to be active to participate. Without exposing my personal information, I can put on the chain a series of proofs about my personal information that will allow me to participate in this DAO. So they don't know who I am, essentially, but they do know that I am able to contribute. Another is freedom of commerce, exchanging value in a confidential way that is regulatory friendly. Now, let me, let me talk about regulatory friendly because there was some interesting chatter on Twitter, I hear. Um, I don't do Twitter, but I did hear about it. Somebody said something about a backdoor. There's no backdoors in Midnight, right? I'm not even sure where that assertion would come from. There's nothing in the chain that says that there is uh, the ability to, for some random person to just get in and understand everything that's happening. But a DAP developer can say in their terms of service, I'm in a regulated industry. I'm going to need to be able to respond to subpoenas or something like that. Do you agree to use my DAP in order to use my service? And what that will allow the DAP developer to do is, because you agreed to this, allow them to create viewing keys that will show your transactions, if necessary, to a regulatory authority. Now, what this does, and the, the thing that's really important about this is it allows people on a blockchain to actually integrate with the wide world of services that are out there today. And it helps pull them toward a Web3 world. And without this, when are you going to be able to work with a bank that has to respond to regulatory pressures? When will you be able to work with an institution that um, is even in supply chain, for example, or an enterprise application where there, there is strict regulatory authority over the actions in that network? Without that, and without the freedom to have regulatory friendly transactions on the chain, <coughs> you won't be able to actually pull the rest of the world toward Web3. And the last one is freedom of expression. Now, there's some interesting portions about this. You can candidly and openly share content. Now, some of the use cases that we've posited for this one are you could throw some, some darts at them, but let's take the case of a whistleblower. Somebody who found something nefarious happening at a company that they work for, they will be able to publish information through their lawyer without having the, the fear of having retribution. Right? That's a positive use case for this. A positive use case for this is a journalist who wants to publish something in a country that may not be friendly to press freedom. Right? So there are other ways that you could use this, but there are a lot of things that are really necessary to allow people to express the information in an open manner without fear of that censorship so it can't be changed. But it also may shield you from retribution. So there are a lot of advantages to Midnight. You can selectively disclose your information if you choose to. Um, if you don't choose to, you can have complete confidentiality. It's easy to develop. Our first libraries are in TypeScript. So TypeScript will be, uh, you know, it's a very popular programming language. You'll be able to create smart contracts um, and applications with TypeScript. And there's also a lot of developer tools that come with us, the pretty interesting developer tools. Um, it's secure, it inherits uh, the security, et cetera, from Cardano, as I've already said. And of course, it's regulatory friendly because of the ability to create viewing keys. They are not backdoors. Midnight also has KYC friendly um, on ramps. So there we have it, guys. We're going to leave that there. That was an introduction into um, Midnight. Um, what problem it's solving and it's very exciting that potentially we are looking at midnight going live tonight um and i think midnight really showcases the you the use of cardano you know it really showcases the fact that you can leverage what is by all accounts a very sound consensus mechanism to build whatever application and solve whatever real world use case it is you choose to do um and on that note, we're going to love and leave you. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Don't forget to check out allincrypto.com. Come follow me over at Real All in Crypto. Like, comment, and subscribe. And of course, um, stay tuned for more updates. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next.